uh, be able to you know, take part in our content, but to, to reach out to us and to be a part of 247hawkeye.com. So, um, you know, that's, that's, you know, where I think things are with that. Yeah. Yeah. I, thank you. That, um, you're absolutely right. I do have the numbers. I would say that saying the Facebook thing is the most important because that's where people can find me. Honestly, Twitter is dying. It's becoming less and less popular by the day. Um, the problem is, is that what is the other social media site? Is it Parler? Is it Gab? Is it Twitch? I'm leaning towards Twitch, to be honest, Paul. That's what I'm leaning towards. Because you know, if you and me did this, if we did a, uh, if we did a, a game, uh, an Iowa versus Iowa State game stream on Twitch, people would love it. They would love it. There'd be tons of people in there. If we did it on Facebook, people would love it, and they'd be in there. Um, so I'm leaning towards Twitch. You know, I, I just I don't really think Twitter is is getting any bigger. In fact, it's getting smaller. Um, and then also, we've never really gone as hard at Twitter as we have on Facebook, and. Um, you know, because Twitter is just too much to keep up with all that nonsense. So, um, you know, and as I told Dean, Paul, the reality is, is that for me, I'm either all the way in or I'm not in. Plan you know, a lot of people can have one foot in, one foot out. That's not me. You know, and, and I think you see that with with the Instagram. You know, I'm, I'm halfway in. Sometimes I post on that. Sometimes I don't. Twitter, same thing. But Facebook, I'm always on that because I'm in it, you know. YouTube, now I'm fully in it. I'm fully in the video thing. So, you know, that's that. But um, anyways, folks, we've already been on this too long. Let's get into Hawkeye Sports. Paul, what do you got first? What do you got for me first, buddy? So, uh, you know, obviously there's there's a lot going on. Uh, you know, here we are. We got spring football. We got uh, uh, we've got some, you know, stuff going on with the basketball team. Uh, we even we even. You know, saw the the hey, Brooke, uh, come out of Brooke, can, can you move the phone closer up uh, to you a little bit? The phone is that possible? Yeah, that sounds better. There you go. Okay. Uh, yeah. I, so I, I was saying, um, you know, there's there's a lot going on here. Um, you know, we've got spring football. We've got. Uh, uh, stuff going on with the, with the men's basketball team. Uh, we even had our national champion wrestlers, uh, you know, out in Kinnick on the on the open uh, open spring scrimmage I had on Saturday. Uh, there's like a little bit of news in, in the Hawkeye women's basketball team, the Hawkeye women's soccer team. So I mean, we you know we can go a lot of different places here um, if, if that's what we want to do. But you know, I, I think we're football guys and and. So I really think we ought to start with football because that's that's where people's heads are at almost uh, you know exclusively. I, I agree. Um, uh, for football, you know, you mentioned that we didn't really get to see the spring practice, and I, I'm with you there. You know, really, I only saw clips, um, and I said in the last one that to me it was clear cut that Spencer's number one, he looked w the most comfortable by far. You know, I know everybody was pushing for Padilla. And I like Padilla as a second option. And by the way, he is the second option. Hogan is not. He's not there yet. Um, you know, he was tucking and running way too much, and he is not that type of quarterback. He is not a running quarterback. The running quarterback that Iowa has is Padilla. And he, you know, he hung in the pocket strong. Um... To me, Spencer was by far and away the guy um, in that. Uh, but where, where I want to go with this, let's just let's just go here. And, and there's definitely some topics that you want to get to here, and and we'll, you know we can go there. Um, I want to start with wh where right now we see the Big Ten. What teams we see being the top teams in the Big Ten. And for me, Paul, let's just start with the West, okay? It would – the bottom tier teams to me, unequivocally, would be Illinois, 
Okay, I think they're I think they're going to struggle this year. Um, I think Purdue is going to struggle big time this year. I don't think Minnesota is the dark horse that people think they are. Um, I'm not saying that Minnesota is going to have a bad year, but I don't think they're the dark horse that people think. I, I, I would be shocked if Northwestern can do what they did last year again. Um, it would not surprise me if Northwestern had, you know, a, a 500 record or, you know, something like that. I, I think that they will be formidable. They'll, they always have a strong defense. But I, I just don't think they have the things on offense to make it to make it happen this year. You know, people forget the reason they were able to do what they did last year is because they had a veteran quarterback when everybody else did not. You know, and that helped them tremendously. To me, Paul, in the West, it's Iowa and Wisconsin. And I know a lot of sites have Wisconsin in front of Iowa. Most sites have Iowa as a top 15 team going into the season. But they also are very high on Wisconsin. There's a few places that are higher on Iowa than they are on, on Wisconsin. But in my opinion, Iowa is the team to beat. You know, and I know I've said this many times that Iowa has the, the, the that this is the best roster that Kirk Ferentz has had. And it's been true. It has it is held out to be true for the most part. Have they gone to the Big Ten championship? No. But they've you know, they have finished top 15 the past two years, top 25 the past three years. They've had dang good teams. From top to bottom, Paul, this is the best team. I, you know, when the Big Ten Network goes and watches um, the practices, the one thing that they've always said about Iowa practices is that the starters look good, but the but the younger guys, you know, need some work. I don't think that's the case anymore after some strong recruiting classes. I think from top to bottom, Iowa is very solid. Where do you see the Big Ten West, Paul? Yeah, so, um, you know, I want to start by, by talking about Northwestern for a moment. Because, uh, you know, Northwestern has been a bit of a bug for Iowa. They're, they're you know, uh, they're, they're a good team. Um, they're going to be losing some NFL quality. At, at, they're going to have a few guys drafted this this draft here uh, next week. Uh, New Summit cornerback's going to be drafted. Patty Fisher's going to get drafted. Uh, I think they have one or two other guys off that defense, which was a, a incredibly stingy this past year. They always put together a good defense, but um, I mean, they've got they 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 have you know some some dudes, some NFL dudes on that defense that won't be back this year. Right. Uh, they they had a lot of um, uh, it, the Big Ten West outside of Iowa has had a lot of turnover. Uh, in this offseason, you look at you know, all the guys that transferred. Uh, Nebraska is a dumpster oh, fire. I about the uh, Nebraska. How did I forget about Nebraska? Yes, they are a dumpster fire, which we'll come back to them here in a second. Go ahead, Paul. Uh, and so uh, I, I, I think we all think that Minnesota is, you know, decent. And, and you know, they're – but I, I think they've probably hit their ceiling a little bit. I, I, I still think – their season a couple of years ago was was pretty close to smoke and mirrors, um, and uh, uh, and then you know you've got Wisconsin who's always good, and uh, you know and that's I would consider you know um, and so yeah I, I think it's a it's a two team race in the West, uh, you know we'll, we'll see what comes of, of you know if, if Illinois. Illinois is going to lose some guys too to league. You know that Matter Bebe, the wide receiver for them, uh, he's going to be coming out. Uh, uh, and then for Purdue, you know, uh, Rondell Moore gone. So uh, you know, it, we'll, we'll see. I mean, it, it does seem like is I David think Bell I gone from Purdue, or, it, or does he still have one year? Um, who who does? David Bell for Purdue. David Does Bell, he... he's still back. Um, and he's but probably... Losing or is a big deal, and they don't have their quarterbacks for Purdue. Right. And so, I mean, I, I do think Iowa is set up pretty strong for the West. 
Um, you know, anytime, you know, you're returning your quarterback, you're returning the uh, Sam Laporta is, is, you know, I mean, it's tight end you and he's, you know, he's probably the best tight end in the West. And there's a, there's certainly a lot to like there. Um, so, you know, it, it, it's, it's going to come down to the winner of the Iowa Wisconsin game as it seems to do just about every year. You know, for that. Yeah, I'm with you there, Paul. Um, I, I think it's going to come down to Iowa, Wisconsin. We did the poll on the 247hawkeye.com Facebook group. I asked, what is the most important game for Iowa this year? And it's funny because most fans say, or not most fans. Let me rephrase this. The, the voting for that question, people chose Iowa State. That was the top one, followed by Wisconsin. And actually, Indiana is a pretty important game in my – Indiana is more important than the Iowa State game in my opinion. Absolutely. Um, but, you know, uh, they chose Iowa State, and those same people are the people who say that uh, the game against Iowa State means nothing and that Iowa gets nothing out of it. And – but then they vote for Iowa State as the biggest game. Now, going back to the statement that the Iowa State game for Iowa means nothing, I'll say this, and, I, and I, I'm curious what you think, Paul. It, it's big for rivalries, and it's a, it's, a, it's a big game, especially when both teams are good, and it's good for recruiting. So those are two positives. It's a rivalry game. It's, it's good for recruiting. More so for Iowa State than Iowa, to be honest. But it's still relatively good for recruiting. Um, this year, it will be good as far as rankings go and having a big win on your resume for whoever wins that game. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'm not going to lie, Paul. I mean, I would not be butthurt if Iowa decided to play Missouri or decided to play... Um, you know, uh, hell, Cal, or, you know, so, something like, or Arizona State, as opposed to Iowa State. I think it would definitely help Iowa more in recruiting by playing some of those teams and getting into their states and seeing what they can do. Um, so... I do see the positives in playing Iowa State, but I also don't think it's the end-all, be-all to play Iowa State. And I think Iowa State benefits from, from playing Iowa much more than Iowa does. What do you think? Yeah, so, I mean, just because Iowa State is competitive once, you know, every every time Haley's Comet comes around doesn't make, uh, uh, you know, the game valuable to Iowa. It's a big deal in the state. Uh, it's a big deal for Hawkeye fans. It's a big deal for Cyclone fans. I can tell you here in Florida, um, you know, nobody else cares. At least nobody yeah. does. You know, <laughs> this isn't Michigan, Notre Dame. It's not Army, Navy. It's not, you know, Notre Dame, USC. It's not, you know, it, it, it's a good rivalry game. And, and, and you know, for, for people in the state, it matters nationally it's it's pretty much irrelevant the only time it becomes relevant is when you know uh iowa state snake bites iowa and so when people say that there's not a lot to gain that you know from that game i i kind of tend to agree um iowa would be better served you know if they're only going to play uh one non-conference power five team uh in the non-conference you know Absolutely, I, I wouldn't want to lose that Iowa Iowa State game, but there are if if, if, if there's opportunities to play other, uh, you know, and, and and you know if you can play, I don't want them playing Alabama either. Don't get me wrong, because uh, you know that that's not going to go well for for Iowa most years. <laughs> yeah, and uh, who care? You know, Iowa can recruit in Alabama without right. having to play Alabama. Playing Auburn might be fun. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd like to see us play Texas a little more often. Or, yes, you know, I like Texas that. Tech. Uh, uh, you know, I, I'd like to see us get into Texas a little or bit more. Texas A&M or uh, something like that. Yeah. You know, may, maybe a, a Central TCU Florida. would be a fun game. Yeah, South Florida. Uh, yes. 
out in California, if we could, if we could get, you know, uh, San Diego State on the schedule, there, you know, some some options where we can start getting into some new recruiting territories. Right, that would be a bigger benefit. I'm with you a hundred percent. If we were able, if we, the way you have to look at this is recruiting, and for me. It's all the big states, you know. If it, Missouri has a lot of recruits, so I'd be okay playing Missouri or Missouri. Um, I'd be okay with playing any school from the state of Florida, whether it's Florida State, Florida, South Florida, um, Miami. And Miami would be a fun game. Um, it, as you said, Texas, a TCU. I'd be okay with playing Baylor. Um, you know, in California, I'd be okay with playing UCLA. Uh, hell, I'd be okay with playing USC. Um, San Diego State would be a nice game. Um, I, I totally agree. And you know what? You could put San Diego State or like a like a San Jose State team on your or Cal, um, a lower tier program. Even though Cal's in the Pac-12, but a lower tier team on your schedule and still play Iowa state. And I think it would be solid. So what, what um, about, all right, let's you know, move on. Yeah. What, go ahead, Paul. What, what about putting on like a, a UNLV and, and getting them in the Raiders new stadium? That's like a bowl trip in, in, in September, you know, well, Hawkeye fans could, could go out it, it, a Vegas trip. Vegas is easy to get to, uh, it, you know, like here's an opportunity for Iowa fans to get to, you know, go to Vegas for the weekend, catch a Hawkeye game. It seems like a no brainer to me. And I, I think Iowa fans would be just as happy to go make that trip to Vegas as they would, uh, you know, a trip to Ames. Dude, I'm totally with you on that. I actually think the Iowa Iowa State game is losing its lore. <laughs> you know, I really do. Um, this year's game will obviously be big, but it's it's more helpful for Iowa State than it is for Iowa. Plain and simple. And uh, so, yeah. All right. Let's let's go to the East. Let's go to the East. Let's get some traction here. Um, you know, obviously it's Ohio. Oh no no no. Let's not miss Nebraska. I loved watching the Nebraska press conferences, and there was one thing that I saw where, where like, Scott Frost was was not willing. They, they were asked whether one coach was going to be named, like, I don't know, like defensive line coach or something like that, or special teams coach, and, and Scott Frost said, um, we don't care about titles. Titles don't matter. Frost... With all due respect, shut up. They do matter, okay? But it was just funny because he go he goes on to say that they're going to have a coach who coaches kickoff and punt return, and a different coach coach coaching kicking the you know field goals. And that just shows me how misrepresented Nebraska is, and how the day one regiment that they have had tried to implement or quote unquote tried to implement is not there. They have not established anything. And for a program to work, you need to establish what you want to do right away and 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 make it work. And it seems like Nebraska is just trying to still change a lot of things and they're discombobulated, plain and simple. Um, folks, Duke, Nebraska is in trouble. They will not be any better this year than they were last year, and here's the reason why. They have zero discipline, and Scott Frost and their coaching staff really isn't that good. You know, if you really think about Scott Frost, he had one good year at UCF, and that's it. The Big Ten is an entirely different thing, and um, I don't – to be, to me, uh, Paul – it's Illinois, Purdue, and Nebraska are the three worst teams in the Big Ten West. Um, what are your thoughts on, on, on Nebraska? Yeah, so, I, I mean, look, they, they've had a ton of guys transfer out. Yeah, they, they, they had a ton of guys transfer out. Um, yeah, I don't know that they know what, the, what they're trying to do well, at this quick. point. You did something uh, just now to make it sound way better. We, we, not, it doesn't sound like that now, but 
there was something that you did that made it sound super clear. What was that? See I if you can no, try that again. I have no idea. Can you – is this a little bit yeah, better? There we go. Let's just stay with that. Okay. So, uh, you know, I, I, it, I, I have no idea really what's going on over, you know, over in Lincoln. They uh, – I'm not sure they do either. And, you know, I mean, it's a, I'm not sure there's a, there's a team that's had more guys leave that, that program uh, guys who are, you know, their, their offense. I, I don't know if they could try to let them guys out there right now. And if they could, I'm not sure they could get a first down. <laughs> you, did you know this, Paul, the top four players in the state are unequivocally not going to go to Nebraska this year. The the uh, two guys all by the way yeah there's two guys out of Omaha, uh, one's a guard, one's a linebacker. They're probably going to Arizona State. Was in on Caden Helms. Um, it seems like there's always tight ends that come out of the state of Nebraska. Uh, he's pro- it looks like he's going to go anywhere but Nebraska. Mike O'Reilly is not considering he's considering Iowa highly not and he's not considering Nebraska um the the only player that's considering Nebraska is the fifth best <laughs> it's the fifth best guy in the state and that to me shows the trouble that Nebraska is in the number one thing that you need to get your program solid is to get your your in-state recruiting solid and Looks like they're struggling there. So, anyways, let's move on to the East here, Paul. Um, in the East, for me, Michigan State, I, I said it last year, Mel Tucker's not a good coach. He didn't do well at Colorado. And Colorado, you can win there. Okay? You can win at Colorado. Um, Michigan State's going to struggle. Um, Rutgers, I think a lot of people are high on their new coach. I'm not high on that. Um, I think they can be decent, but I don't. But anything more than that, I doubt it. Um, to me, it's Ohio State and Michigan still. But it, well, no, it's Ohio State and Penn State. Um, but I actually think there's a possibility that Michigan comes back really strong. What are your thoughts on the East? Well, I don't know if Michigan knows who's going to play quarterback for them, and uh, the the rumor mill with them is that you know. They're in a little bit of disarray as well, so uh, they they got a little bit of Nebraska going on over there, and and quite frankly, um, you know I think they're they're caught in a bind with uh, with their coach uh, Kakis, and you know they can't get rid of him, but I'm not real sure that they're they're real happy with them. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of pressure in Ann Arbor right now for them to be good, um, and they haven't been bad. Here's the thing, you know, you look at. Uh, there's probably 85% of college football would, would take the results Michigan's had over the last few years. I mean, at one point, um, you know, before they came to Kinnick, they, they were, they were a, a playoff contender. And then, you know, 20, 2016, I think it was uh, 2017. Um, uh, and so it, it's just one of those things where, They've been very successful. They've, they've been playing in the, the New Year's the, the New Year's Day Bowls and, and things like that. But Michigan you know, fans, I think, are are uh, have a hyperinflated idea of what should be going on there. In my opinion, yeah. I mean, you're yeah. exactly right, Paul. Ninety five percent of college football would be very happy if what was what Jim Harbaugh was doing in Michigan was happening at their school. Absolutely. But, you know, uh, you know, and, and, you know, Michigan fan will tell you, well, that's why we're Michigan. We expect better. And, uh, you know, and, and until they until they beat Ohio State, they're they're going to continue to to be the second fiddle in the East right now. And, um, you know, it's it, I mean, yeah, I mean, and it's it's not just Ohio State. I mean, Wisconsin has has really owned Michigan the last few times they played them. You know, I mean, Wisconsin put a absolute beat down on them this year. Uh, you know, in, in twenty twenty, and uh, you know, uh, I think two years in a row that, that Wisconsin has done that. 
Um, again, you know, we talk about what Iowa's done against Michigan recently. I mean, Michigan has not played. Uh, I, I think I saw at one time that uh, that uh, as good as Harbaugh has been, I want to say he he didn't have any wins versus ranked teams or hit, hadn't beaten a ranked team on the road. There was yeah. there was some that that really stood out. Uh, and then you look at you know what Penn State, um, you know I I, I, I don't want to look at twenty twenty um, and and try to judge where the Penn State program is. Um, I agree. Obviously, it's hard to judge with Penn State because they struggled last year. They really did. They struggled, Paul. Yeah, and, and you know the, the, their problem in twenty twenty was was quarterback. You know they 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 you know they they didn't really settle on one. Um, they obviously you know it, it's it's much easier winning. Winning's a lot easier when you have a guy like Saquon Barkley. They kind of look like they're they were still trying to find, you know, their next Saquon Barkley. Uh, they're losing Pat Fryermuth, the tight end this, this year to the draft. Um, a couple of guys on defense, Micah Parsons, who, who didn't play in 2020, but um, we're talking about a top five draft pick there and Micah yeah. Parsons. So, um, you know, they, they've got some rebuilding uh, that they're working on uh, over uh, in Happy Valley too. So, I mean, the West is it's Ohio State and and everybody right. else, and, and I, you know. So uh, it, I think in the East or in the in the West, you know, you've got Iowa, Wisconsin, and then you know, uh, in, in the East, it's Ohio State and everybody else. Yeah, I'm with you. Ohio State is uh, it, they they are the top team. I think the West is better than um, I think the West is, is better. Than the East right now, I don't even think there's a question on that. Um, so you know, um, you know that's just the case. It's Ohio State now. All right, let's go. Let's bring this back to Iowa, uh, Paul. What, what, what uh, did you have for me? What What were some of the things that you wanted to dive into here? Well, you know, with with people, you know, being able to watch the spring practice uh, this past week and you know, the reports that have been out and everything. Um, I did have some questions that, that kind of came to my mind. So at Iowa, why is it so hard for freshmen to crack the two deeps? Because you look around, uh, you look at the the quarterback for Wisconsin, this is a true freshman, he comes in, he's starting uh, different places. These guys are coming in, making big impacts as true freshmen. But in Iowa, um, that is that is not the norm. Why, why is that? Well, I think, Paul, that being a developmental program has a lot to do with that. I wouldn't say Iowa is, at, you know, adverse to playing freshmen. But I do think that, you know, we saw Tristan Wirfs do it. We saw um, Alaric Jackson. Do it. He was a redshirt freshman, but we saw Alaric Jackson do it. Uh, Tyrone Tracy played as a freshman. Um I think Iowa likes to develop their guys, no matter how talented, for the most part, for at least one year. Um, and, you know, I don't necessarily disagree with that because I'll put it to you this way. If there is a junior or a senior who is the same talent as a freshman who's coming in, I think you go with the junior if you're a developmental program and allow the younger guy to develop. Um, you know, again, I'm not sure that Iowa, Tyler Goodson played as the freshman. I'm not sure that they're adverse to playing. Now, do they do it as much as other programs? Certainly not. But, yeah, I think a lot of it has to do with the uh, development, Paul, to be honest. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, I think I think you kind of nailed it there. Um, but that kind of leads me into my next question here. So let's take uh, – Let's take maybe Iowa out of the equation on this, but you're you're the head football coach of a program. Uh, would you rather play younger guys ahead of veterans, knowing that they're more likely to make mistakes, but uh, you know they they may provide something else, uh, more of an upside in other areas. But you know you, you know that that you know they're more prone to m making mistakes because they're younger. Uh, I'm sorry. I asked that again, Paul. Yeah. So, would you, 
it, would you as a head coach be be more willing to play a younger guy over a more experienced guy uh knowing that the younger guy is more likely going to make mistakes he may be out of position a little bit more often he could you know but on the flip side he he has more more talent or, or more athletic ability and it could he has a higher ceiling right that, that, and that's what i was going to say so it, it putting myself in that position if if and and i'll just pretend i'm coaching a high school team and there's a freshman that comes in that is good enough to play varsity or something like that honestly paul i i think and i understand the argument of putting in a younger guy and to get them reps right away if they are equally talented as an older guy because they have a higher ceiling um but it, it's totally different when it's college sports because all these guys are crazy talented um i think it would just depend you know i think it would depend on the need you know is it if it's wide receiver you know do, do we need that depth and therefore we go with the with the younger guy i mean you know they went with amir smith marset and brandon uh smith when they were freshmen you know, Dean or Paul, I'll be honest with you. I probably would go with the older guy. I would. In college sports, if I was the coach, I would go with the older guy, and I would make the younger guy earn it. I would give the younger guy adversity, see how he takes it, see if he can earn it, as long as I did not feel that the older guy would not help me win. If, if, the, if, if I felt good that the older guy would help me get Ws, I would go with him and see – how the freshmen acted and see and make them earn it. I'm a big believer in making someone earn things, you know? So, um, yeah. Yeah. Well, so I have a, and this was a little unplanned here, but I just kind of thought about this. So, you know, 20 years ago when Kirk started coaching at Iowa, um, you know, he, he could do that. He could develop guys, you know, uh, you know, he, he could bring guys kind of along, but now we've got the transfer portal, right? And, you know, does that kind of have to change things the way he would like to, for them to be? Because, you know, now you get a, a young guy with, with a ton of talent uh, and he's he's waiting behind a guy with experience, uh, you know, and he can just, hey, deuces, man, I'm, I'm going to go play where I can, you know, they'll, they're going to be free to let me make mistakes, but let me, let me do me. Yeah, yeah. Um... This is a whole new world that we're living in with the transfer portal and all of that stuff, you know, um, but I, you know, I, and I've said this before, you know, when, when someone, and, and th I, when I was talking about this before, I was talking about CJ and with regards to basketball, but I'm going to take it to, to football. Um, when guys choose Iowa, they choose Iowa not because their family told them to, because a lot of times in recruiting, you have family members saying, oh, you got an Alabama offer, you got to go to Alabama, that's where you go. And a lot of times kids, you know, think that these people have the best interests for them, and and so they trust those those things, and, and, and they listen to them, and they go to said school or whatever. When kids choose Iowa, they choose Iowa because they feel strong about the coaching staff and strong about the relationship and strong about the development that can the that the coaches can give them and so that's why I've always loved how Iowa goes about recruiting because at the end of the day Iowa is an elite football program but but Iowa is not Ohio State Iowa is not USC so kids are not choosing the school based off of the school name you know um and so I think that you know um the premise, I don't really think that they would d d uh, decide to leave. But, you know, we've seen a lot of people leave, Paul, you know. Um, and I think a lot of that has to do with the confidence that these players have um, in football. When these kids hit the transfer portal, you know, 50 percent of the time, they don't even find a new team, Paul. You know, so this is a, a crazy new world we are entering into. You know, I, no offense leaving. I completely disagreed with that. I have no idea why he did that. Um, it comes down to the struggle, Paul. Kids these days, it does not seem like they want to go through the struggle of earning their spot of where they need to be. 
Yeah. Yeah. And, and so, I mean, I'm not sure if I answered your question, but <laughs> yeah, I, no, I think you did a great job. So, uh, do you feel like the Iowa system then, when it comes to playing younger guys or, or not, you know, of, uh, 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 you know, do you think that it, it that the system works for Iowa or benefits them because uh, they sacrifice talent for experience? Or, or do you think that it holds them back from greater success at times? That's a good question. I do think it holds them back, honestly, um, because, you know, I, you, the, um, I, I forget his name. He's on college game day. It's the um, Desmond Howard. I think that's his name. He said that Iowa should always be – um, a top 25 recruiting class. And I, I disagree with that. I mean, I think Iowa should always be top 35. And I've said many times that as long as Iowa has a top 40 recruiting class or top 45, they're going to be just fine. You know, you look down the road and you look at how that recruiting class performs, it'll be great. I mean, if, if, if I go back and I look at, um, you know, uh, which I'll pull up here in a second, some of the recruiting classes where Iowa was 40th and you look at how it turned out, they turned, it turned out just fine. Um, but if Iowa was more willing um, to do what you just asked, I do think that they could get some higher caliber guys. Um, but I also think that it could mess with the culture that Iowa does have Paul and, and culture is a big deal when it comes to sports. So, but yes, at times it does hold them back. I would definitely say that it holds them back at times of, of getting some guys that they can get that are highly talented and bringing them into the program, no doubt. I, kind of, I, you know, I, I, I believe in, in meritocracy big time. Absolutely. I'm with you 100%. There. We're, we're in agreement there. And, and, and because of that, I really like, the Iowa way, uh, if we want to call it, um, you know, uh, if it, it, I don't care, you know, I mean, Kirk, does, Kirk cares, you know, he, he cares what you did in high school, but you know, the moment you step into the gym or you step, uh, uh, onto the practice field or onto the game field, your, your high school resume does not matter at this point. It's, you know, uh, you know, it, it, and it's more about how fast you can run or how high you can jump. It, 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 it's, are you going to do the, the little things that are going to help the ball club? Or are you going to not do the little things and it's going to hurt the ball club? Yeah. And at the end of the day, he wants, he wants 11 guys that are all, uh, you know, all, all doing the right thing. And because um, 10 guys doing the right thing and one guy doing the wrong thing throws the whole thing off. Right. Kirk Ferentz cares about about character when he's recruiting guys, and I love that. I do. Um, I also love that they look for intangibles. You know, they look for a kid who may be a tad bit undersized, but they move well. And and you know, Kirk Ferentz and the staff do. A, and, and I want folks to remember this: you don't choose football; football chooses you. And a great example of that is Kayvon Merriweather, who could have played Division One basketball. But Phil Parker found him and has, tur has turned him into an NFL draft prospect. Now, um, they go out and find, you know, because a lot of times these guys that are four-star guys, they are already developed. And there, there's not much more of a ceiling they can get to. Whereas, you know, let's go back to TJ Hawkinson, okay? A kid like that, or George Kittle, 6'5", 220. George Kittle was a 6'3", 190 wide receiver. But the coaches could envision a couple of years in the weight room what that would look like and what they would be on the field. And I love that. I love seeing that from Iowa. And then you end up having high-character guys. And I, 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 my favorite, one of my favorite things about watching Iowa football is seeing – the beginning stages of a guy and then, uh, you know, two years down the line, how he looks physically, you know, that's why, you know, I was talking to you, Paul, about, you know, looking at the pictures, you know, and, and wanting to see, you know, I was saying, I want more Iowa content. Why does Iowa not have more content? It would help in recruiting most definitely if there's more content. 
and I don't care to see it for drama. What I care to see it is to see how guys are developing physically. And, you know, a, a, another great example of Iowa's roster right now, and by the way, I want to, uh, well, I'll get to this in a second, is um, Riley Moss. I mean, he ca- he came in at six foot 175. Now, if you look at him, his rear end is absolutely massive. His calves are massive. Um, his body looks like an NFL body, and I do think he'll be an NFL cornerback. And I said it on the last thing. It is pretty – it will be kind of weird to have a white guy at the cornerback position in the NFL. It is. It's just unheard of. It doesn't happen. But the kid is athletically gifted, and his body looks good now. It's all developed and everything, and it looks cool. By the way, um, if we go back, Paul, to the 2018 recruiting class, okay – John Wagner will be a starter for the Hawkeyes. Dallas Credit uh, uh, was the top recruited, uh, top ranked guy, but he's like second or third on the depth chart. I'm surprised he hasn't transferred out yet. But it's just not working out for him. Tyler Linderbaum is an NFL guy. Spencer Petras is now the starting quarterback. Julius Brents was got playing time at Iowa, decided to quit, and then he went to Kansas State. We'll see how that turns out. DJ Johnson, we'll see how that turns out. Um, Davion Nixon will be a first-round draft pick or early second round. Tyrone Tracy is going to be probably the most productive Iowa wide receiver we've seen in a long time. Noah Shannon is a starter. Dylan Doyle was a starter for both Iowa and Baylor. Jack Plum. You know, I could go down the Nico Raggiani, a.k.a. Nico Regani. You know, and this was a thir- this was a 39th ranked recruiting class. My point is, is that when Iowa is in the top 45. In recruiting, they can take that talent, Paul, and turn it into a top 15 type talent pool, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, You know, that's I I did see there was I I, I can't remember who who, uh, published this. And so I apologize, everyone. But there was uh, and I don't know if it was Bleacher Report or, or Pro Football Focus or. But somebody had done uh, where it, it was wins, <clears throat> excuse me, wins above uh, recruiting rankings. And I was right there they, uh, as far as teams that, that really overachieve based on their average recruiting rankings. I think right. they were second or third. I mean, where was uh, Iowa ranked? What's that? Where was Iowa ranked? What, uh, what were they? So I think they, you know, it, in rela- so what it, it, they took, you know, say you're the last five or ten draft class position. So I mean, Iowa was averaging, I think, like 38, but their their average finish was say like 17. Wow. As far yeah, you know, there's you know, yeah. So that's you know they're incredible. they're averaging it is. 21 it's awesome. higher than them. Yeah. I mean that's amazing. It really is. You know, it, it really is. And and uh, it, recruiting matters. But it, 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 you know, it's, it's big time. Um, w- yeah, what else do we got going on, Paul? What, what do you want to talk about here? Well, um, so, you know, as, as you know, we're, there's just a few days left here in spring practice. Saturday uh, is going to be the last uh, spring practice. Oh, again, open to fans at Kinnick. No, no, Paul, I'll uh, ask you this real quick. Let's just do this now. You got banned on Facebook. Let's talk about this. Let's have a little comedy real quick. Let's have some okay. comedy. Because honestly, it's probably going to be the title of the episode is uh, my partner banned on Facebook. That's <laughs> that's what it's going to be. Um, you know, D- Dean gets and and, I, you know, we me and him have talked about it on the air. You know, he doesn't like bullying, which I get it. OK, fair enough. You know, I've said that I don't really think it matters. If it bothers you, then don't respond to them, you know, because because what I've realized doing this for two years now, two, three years now, is that 95 percent of people are positive. The other five percent are negative. Who gives a de- those guys are losers. Forget about the five percent. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I don't like, what bothers me more than the bullying is the banning. And, and, and the tattletaling. So, and I've been, I've been suspended too. I've been, you know that I've been suspended as well. Yeah. Um, 
and I'll just tell you guys what I think about it. I think it it sucks and it's terrible. And th the funny thing is, is that if the person had met me in person, they wouldn't dare do something like that tattletaling. Now, I'm not saying like, you know, anything physically or anything like that, but it's just you have people who are behind the keyboard that have courage to do things behind the keyboard, but then in real life, they would not, they wouldn't have the courage to do it. And it bothers me that this tattletaling actually works. And it's just like, we're all grown adults, man up, man up, you know, <laughs> it gets frustrating. Um, and uh, so tell me, you know, what you think about your little suspension. So, I mean, first of all, you know, I guess it's nice to be back, uh, you know, three days in the slammer. Yeah, he's uh, back. He's out of jail. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't in real jail. Jokes, but. You know, they, they, they feed you pretty good in Facebook jail. So, uh, you know, <laughs> and, and for anybody who's never actually, you know, face this uh, i gotta tell you that so this is what happens they um they, they suspend your account from posting or liking or or commenting in, on anything but you still can get in and see everything so somebody can post the most absolutely ridiculous lies you know uh you know like saying that the the new georgia voting laws are uh are jim crow laws on steroids right so somebody could say that to us, um, which, you know, Facebook's going to let that go. Uh, but the moment you respond to that and, and call that out for being complete and total bullshit, um, pardon my language, uh, well, now, now that's bullying. And, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're going to, you know, give you their, their digital spanking and, and put you in time. So, uh, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, it's I, I guess, nonsense you know, as an adult that that happens, that you are in timeout. Literally think about that for a second. You're in timeout. I mean, it's just, it's utterly ridiculous. And um, th this is not going down a good path. You know, it's it's just not. Um, you know, I've told you, Paul, I, I don't think it's worth it to respond because I just, I don't think at the end of the day, people are willing to actually um, listen and, and think that possibly their opinion is, is incorrect. Um, and I, and so, you know, the, and so I just don't think it's worth it. I think it's much better to just put, you know, your, your stuff on an official thing, AKA two, four, seven, Hawkeye.com push that out. And then, you know, say, deal with it, you know, like that. Um, that that's my take on it, but um, I'm glad you're out of jail and, and that's all good. All right, let's go back to Hawkeye sports. Yeah. Well, and, and I do want to say just one more thing, you know, I, I, it was probably want, Chad Lysenko that tattled on you. <laughs> you know, probably, uh, you know, but probably Rob Howe. Uh, it, it, <laughs> you know, uh, but you know, he has penis envy. What can I tell you? So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, it's crazy. It's probably those guys, but yeah. Um, so but, what else we have on tap for Iowa sports here? What, what do we got? We we got the CJ Frederick stuff, which yeah. honestly, you know, I don't That's care. Crazy. I'm gonna say it. I was close to getting some more information. Um, I, I don't really have it. I will say, and, and I want, and you know what? Let's just talk about it, Paul. I don't even think it's that big of a deal. It's not. Um, listen, folks. I've told you guys this many times, okay? It, it, being a part of a Division One program myself, there is drama behind the scenes of any program, it's even the good ones. There's always drama. And number one with this basketball situation, this is the new college basketball, okay? This is the new college basketball, plain and simple. Until the rules are changed, this is how it's going to be. Where starters transfer, people who don't play transfer, that's how it's going to be. And Fran McCaffrey is going to have to adapt, plain and simple. He's going to have to adapt, or else Iowa is going to struggle to win games in the Big Ten. But, and I want to preface this with saying that I don't know for sure if it's true. It's just secondhand information. But, you know, apparently, Jack Nungy did not leave Iowa because... He wanted to be closer to home. You know, a lot of people used the death of his dad as the reason why he left. That's not the reason, apparently. 
Um, and and I'm not saying I'm not saying that that's not the reason, but that is what I heard from a very good soul source. Um, CJ Frederick, there's just drama there. You know, I, I wish I could have actually heard what the culture is and what the incident is, so that I could um, expound upon it and and without giving away the source and things like that. It, you know, just to give you guys this. But I will also say this. I think the program is healthy. Obviously, Iowa has won, you know, 40 or like 60 games in the past three years. It's been great. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's a little drama there, Paul. What, what do you think? Well, you, you know, I, I hate speculation, right? Yeah. Yeah, if we have something that, that, that we can talk about, uh, you know. I, yeah, there's really nothing knowledge, to talk about second, here, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I mean. Otherwise, we're just kind of adding to the drama at this point. Look, CJ is a great player, um, and, and you know, yes, you way, know there Hunter were some of you guys is, saying that he was not a good player when I wrote that article. He is a good player. Okay, he's not all Big Ten, but he's a good player. Nolan, you've been saying for the past two years he has NBA potential. There we so, go. Yep. Uh, I mean, if you go back, you listen to. Uh, NHA podcasts over the last year plus two years. Um, you, you read the articles that we've written, um, that you've written, and it, we've we've always spoken very very highly of CJ Frederick. That opinion hasn't changed just because um, he's going to go play somewhere else. We definitely wish him well, um, right. but you know we're gonna we're gonna look forward to um, the guys that we have here, the new guys that we're gonna have coming in, and right. um, you know Fran's got his work cut out for him, but. Um, you know what? Uh, what do we said this two years ago when uh, you know guys guys left? Uh, you know, uh, 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 Isaiah Moss, Tyler Cook, whatever. And, and went, oh, I, I was, Cook went to the NBA. But I want to say this real quick. Paul is a hundred percent right. I, matter of fact, I was the one who said it was likely that Isaiah Moss left because he felt the heat from C.J. Frederick and. And I, we hadn't even seen C.J. Frederick play a game yet. He was redshirted. He was redshirted. I was on, I was on his train since day one. And, and you know, I, I said what what Luke Ridnour had relayed to me about his talent evaluation of C.J. Frederick. I was positive, very positive about C.J. Frederick. I still am. Do I think he should have transferred? No. Do I think that Iowa is in trouble because he transferred? No, and that's all it is. No big deal. I don't think that there, you know, there's any big deal with that. All right, um, Paul. What else we got? We got some. We got some fo uh, football to get to. Baseball's doing good, folks. Um, I'm gonna check to see if they won last night. Um, Paul, what, what else do you want to get to with with Iowa Hawkeye sports? Um. Uh you know, it just maybe one one more football topic. I know we're kind of bouncing back to football, uh, but then I think that'll be it. So, you know, hey, several names have kind of popped up since the start of spring practice. Uh, whether it's the media bringing the names up or the players bringing the, the, the these guys' names up, um, what have you heard as far as who's who's showing out? Um, and and any surprises for you? Um. Obviously, Tyrone Tracy is showing out. And, Paul, you know that I've been on his bandwagon for a while. You know, what he showed us when uh, Brandon Smith went down, I mean, I nearly almost said that he should continue to start over Brandon Smith. I mean, I literally, in fact, I did say I was thinking, um, so Tyrone Tracy, um, you know, we're hearing a lot about Desmond Hudson. I think he'll probably start at the X. I think I think what we'll see is Desmond Hudson at the X. Uh, the two primary receivers will be Nico Raggiani, a.k.a. Nico Regani, and Tyrone Tracy. But I do think Calvin Lockett will take the big possession wide receiver role. Um, I do think a name to keep an eye on is uh, uh, Quavon Matthews out of Florida. Um, I'm kind of surprised we haven't heard anything about Deontay Vines. I've been high on him. Um, 
you know, out of Connecticut, the wide receiver out of Connecticut. Maybe he's injured, but we haven't heard jack about him. And I haven't even seen him in any of the pictures. Obviously, Keegan Johnson and Arlen Bruce are doing good, um, which is, I would say that's somewhat surprising a little bit. That, that you know, because just because you're highly rated doesn't mean always that you're going to come in and dominate or do do well. Um, I would say the the um, also for me, uh, some of the guys. I was happy with how Spencer did, Paul. I, I really was. Um, I thought he did okay. Um, I was happy with Padilla as a as as a second option. He's not the first option. He's a second option. Um, you know, outside of that, I, you know. I, I, a surprise to me would be how strong the defensive line it, it looks to be. Um, and hopefully the offensive line can kick it into gear. That My only worry, Paul, is the offensive line. That's it. Everything else, I feel the defense will be a top 10 defense in the country yet again. Um, my thing is the offensive line for Iowa. They need to get that secured and set um, and, and, and that's really, that's really it. But yeah. Um, what about you? Was it, were there any surprises or anything like that? Um, you know, I mean the, the stuff that I've heard, uh, you know, that, that I'm excited about, it sounds like the, the back seven of the defense really, really good. Um, you know, you talked about the D line, I'm thinking back seven. So, you know, our forces combined there, like you said, another top 10 defense, I think, uh, the, you know, now or the, the two early games are going to put that 25-point streak to the test. So we're going to see if Iowa can hold Indiana and, and Iowa State to that uh, under 25. Um, if they can, uh, then, then I, I, you know, hey, look out. Big Ten West Championship is, is definitely on the horizon. So, um, but, uh, yeah, so I, I would say the, the defensive back seven showing out for me is big. Um, and uh, I – you know, everything else that, that I can just kind of echo what you said. So, uh, so far, I, I, I think maybe more than anything to this point, guys are dinged, you know, they're practicing, but we haven't, you know, heard about, uh, you know, any season ending issues right. or anything like that. So um, I'm excited and, about I'm Sam Laporta, Paul. Really, I am. Are you? Have you heard about Sam Laporta so far? I think he's going to, you know – He's it next in line. He's ready to go. He's mm -hmm. ready to go. Yeah. And he looks good. He looks he's moving well. His body looks good. Um honestly, I Paul, I think, I think Josiah Beeman. What go ahead? I heard he was just throwing guys around yeah. uh, at that spring practice as far as like the blocking goes. I mean, we already know he's a good receiver, but if he's right. if he's just gonna toss guys around like a rag doll, um yeah, wow. Yeah, I think actually, too, even though Josiah Meeman got in trouble, I think that it's between him and Luke Lachey for the number two spot. Um, you know, even with him getting in trouble, you know, because he's coming back to practice. If you look at the pictures, he's involved. You don't really see Elijah Yelverton right now. Um, so I think that they're battling for the two spot, Meeman and Lachey, but it's Sam Laporta all the way. Um, Paul. You know, we said last year, we hyped up the wide receiver group last year. And, it, you know, in all honesty, it didn't really work out because it was a first-time st uh, starting quarterback. Uh, there just wasn't as much time to get in a groove with one another. But we saw as the year went on, it, the, the, the wide receiver group looked dang good. Do you think that this wide receiver group is the most polished, one that Iowa has had in a, we said it last year as well, but it, that doesn't mean we can't say it again. Do you think that this wide receiver group, we should have high expectations for? Yeah. If anything, uh, you know, uh, you gotta love the fact that we're going to have the spring this year. We're going to have an actual like fall camp before the season actually starts. Uh, we should get to play football in some good, passing weather you know in september and october compared to november and december so the idea that um that the receivers uh, the quarterbacks and receivers couldn't have a you know a very highly successful season i i i i would i think the expectation should be high 
there's a lot of experience there, you know, with, with the guys you talked about, Raj, uh, Nico Regani, um, uh, Tyro Tracy, uh, Charlie Jones. I mean, th- there's guys that have seen significant playing time that, um, you know, that, that, you know, these are, these are Petrus's guys. Now we talked about Brandon Smith and Smith Marset. Those were Stanley's guys. Those were Stanley's guys that, that he didn't even get to, to spring ball with. And so, you know, I, I, I like where, where this could head because we're, there's going to be familiarity there. There's going to be timing there. And, uh, and, and I think we've, we've all seen now what Tyron Tracy can do. You know, he's a guy that, you know, the yard after catch kind of guy, just get him the football and get out of the way. Yeah. Um, let me ask you, Paul, you know, because there's not really a ton of stuff to talk about right now. So, you know, obviously this is a more speculating uh, podcast. Uh, and, you know, you had some great questions. I know you got to get going here soon, Paul. But for me... The expectations that Iowa Hawkeye fans should have for this Iowa team should be very high. This is a very talented group um, with a lot of upside. There, there's some youth at some positions, but there are, there's also some veteran talent at others. You know, the back seven is is freaking strong. Um, and, you know, I think Zach Van Volkenberg is going to play great. I think John Wagner is going to actually – you know, uh, take a step forward. To me, it's a Big Ten, Big Ten appear, Big Ten title appearance. Iowa needs to win the West this year. And you know, Paul, remember when we were talking about basketball? How we need to hold Fran McCaffrey to a higher standard now. That's kind of how it is for me now with Ferentz. Iowa football is at a point where. It is, it, you know, if Northwestern can make it two times out of the last, how, you know, four years, Iowa needs to make it. Plain and simple. They have the talent. They have the coaching staff. They have everything. The expectation for me is a is an appearance in the Big Ten game. And I don't know how many games they're playing this year, Paul. Is it the normal amount? Do you know? I, I believe we're, we're, we're back to the new normal or old normal or whatever you want to call it. Let's have some fun here. Uh, let's look at the Iowa football schedule, okay? Um, and let's look, you and me. Let's decide right now. And obviously, we can change our opinion when the season gets closer and things like that. Okay. Um, I'm looking at the schedule to see how many games there's going to be, and you know, say what I think Iowa will be: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twelve games. So Paul was right. All right. I think Iowa should win 10 games, plain and simple, nine or 10 games. Okay. And I'm going to go through this and then I'm going to ask Paul, you know, we're going to go through this right now. Okay. And this is going to be the last thing we do. We're going to go to an hour and 20 minutes. Okay, Paul. Yeah, it works. Indiana. uh, Let's start with Indiana. Okay. Um, I, I don't know if they have their starting quarterback back. I'm pretty sure they do. Um, this is going to be a tough game, but it's in Iowa city. I think Iowa will be favored in this game. Um, I think in, in, in a first game, the best thing that you can have is a very solid defense and Iowa will have that. I'm picking Iowa over Indiana. What do you think, Paul? So tough game out of, uh, you know, right out of the shoot. Um, the game's in Kinnick. Uh, and, and uh, I, I think Kinnick's going to be rocking and rolling and, uh, you know, Hawks by a million here. So you're going with Iowa, right? Absolutely. It's not <laughs> a question. Yeah, I'm going with Iowa too. All right, let's go to the, the Cyhawks series. Um, Iowa versus Iowa State. Listen, folks, I'm going to say this clearly and bluntly, okay? Iowa State had a good year last year, but, it, you know, it's one thing to be the underdog and to get to the top. It's another to stay at the top. I'm not saying Iowa State's going to have a bad season. And I also said this to Dean. 
It was important that Iowa beat Wisconsin last year. Why? Because when they beat them, now the entire roster knows that they can beat Wisconsin. I remember, you know, for us at UOP, mentally, when you have not beaten a team, you know, maybe twice in a row, you've lost twice in a row, it is hard to envision what it takes to beat that team because you've lost to them multiple times, a.k.a. Iowa State. So they don't even know what it takes to beat Iowa yet. Um, I got to be honest, it's going to be a tough game. But for me, because Iowa has an elite run game, with Tyler Goodson, and I think the and the backups will be phenomenal for Iowa, that Iowa will be able to lean on the run game and the defense to beat Iowa State. And I do think Iowa has something that they haven't had in years, which is an actual wide receiver group that can make the defense honest. I'm going with I- Iowa, and I actually wouldn't be shocked if Iowa you know, beat the brakes off of Iowa State. I think that's a good call here. I, I I think Iowa has a huge advantage over Iowa State in this game from the standpoint of Iowa has a real opponent that they're going to play before they play Iowa State in Indiana. Um, you know, they're going to make they're, they're going to be able to make adjustments and improvements and changes uh, off the game film they're going to have against a legit Big Ten uh, opponent. With you know, so. Iowa's going to know more about Iowa going into the Iowa State game than Iowa State's going to know about Iowa State going into the Iowa right. game. If that makes sense. I'm with you there. Um, so you're picking Iowa there. Iowa versus Kent State. Iowa, obviously, I, you know. <laughs> yeah. Me and Paul are both picking Iowa. Iowa versus Colorado State. I'm picking Iowa, even though I do think that, that both of these games potentially could be a little – because Kent State's – Always a good team in in the in the MAC. Colorado State is is a decent team. Um, they always give Colorado problems, but Colorado is not Iowa. But we're picking uh, Iowa there. So you, so you think Iowa is going to start four and zero, Paul? Yeah, I like I like the four and zero start and one and zero in the Big Ten, which is always nice. Four and zero, one and zero. We'll take that. I, I think if Iowa can get out of there three and one. That would be fine as well. I'd be okay with three and one, um, but obviously four and zero would be better. Okay, at Maryland, and let's stop. Let's stop at the Purdue game, and then we'll do the rest later. All right. Um, you know, I, I don't at really like Maryland. this game at Maryland. I, I'm I'm not a big fan of this. Uh, not not that you know going to play at Maryland is is a snake pit or anything, but um, the. Uh, they 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 put they're putting together some some recruiting classes over at Maryland and uh, early in the season, you know, uh, look that game's gonna be tougher than people think. So uh, you know, we'll we'll see what happens there. I'm, I'm not entirely sold that Iowa. I, I I could see that as being a, a game where um, you know Iowa comes in highly ranked um, and and just doesn't get the job done. So look out for you know a, a noon kick. Uh, at at Maryland and and you know, it, uh, I, I could see that not going well. Okay, so it looks like you're picking Maryland. Wow. Okay. All right. I'm going with Iowa there. I I, I don't think Iowa's gonna have a problem there. Um. I I think it's more probable that Iowa in the first four games with Indiana, Iowa State, Kent State, or Colorado State, they drop one of those. Um. But. I'm going with Maryland, and I'm saying Iowa starts 5-0. and Iowa then plays Penn State. Um, that's going to be a tough game. Um, here's the deal, folks. I'll be honest with you. I don't see any team that can beat – when I look at Iowa and I look at their roster, I see that, that they can beat anybody. And so it's hard for me to look at reasons why they wouldn't win. Um, and so, you know, against Penn State, Iowa certainly can win that game. I do think Penn State is very troublesome. Um, and, uh, I'm going to go, gosh, darn it. I can't pick Iowa to go undefeated because they're not going to go undefeated. Um, you know what? I'm going to say Iowa wins this game, but I'm going to, 
I'm going to have to pick a loss here somewhere else. What do you think, Paul? Yeah, so I, 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 you know, and that adds to this whole Maryland thing. So you've got Penn State following up that Maryland game. Uh, I'm kind of thinking maybe we, we kind of get caught peeking ahead a little bit. But Iowa refocuses and they come back and they do beat Penn State. So who are you picking? Iowa to beat Penn State. Love it, love it, love it. All right. Purdue, um, I think Iowa will be just fine against Purdue. This is where we're going to stop it. Um, I, I'm picking Purdue, and I know I have Iowa going 6-0 and here, um, and, and it's more likely that they'll be 5-1 and or something like that. That's, I'll, I'll admit that. But it's hard for me when I look at individual games to say that Iowa will lose because I look at all these teams, and I don't see a team that Iowa cannot be, should not beat. So yeah. I'm picking Purdue. Who you got, Paul? Yeah, I'll take the Hawks in this one. Uh, yeah, yes, they they still have David Bell, uh, and but you know what? It's not going to be the first game of the season, uh, and and you know I was going to be you know tested at this point, and I feel like uh, you know I, I I just feel like Iowa. It, it's time to beat Purdue. I agree. Yeah. It is time to beat Purdue. All right, folks. We're going to stop here. Um, listen, folks, football, this is the best. Uh... Oh, man, just got some um, great news. Uh, hold on a second. I got it. Paul, uh, carry, um, Paul, go ahead. Well, here's the deal. Let's just, yeah. How about this? Listen, folks, um, Iowa football is in the air. Again, I wish that there was more content from Iowa. I don't know why they don't have someone just following the program, giving us videos, and you know where the school can check it out and say this is what's up and things like that. It would help recruiting, you know, because again, somebody who lives in Alabama doesn't know jack squat about iowa the only way that they would know about iowa is visiting iowa but if you provide videos of the strength room of you know practice uh and things like that it helps recruiting i don't know why Iowa doesn't have it it is what it is but um um anyways paul any final words before we head out of here hey i just wanted to wish everybody uh... you know what, actually let's finish on this let's finish on this let's I want to make it clear about what I think about Iowa basketball. Let's let's do let's do that real quick, folks. Iowa basketball is going to be just fine. Okay, as I wrote in my article, they have four six eight six nine guys. They're going to have Chris Murray, which I am, or yeah, Chris Murray, who I am telling you guys will be. At the very least, what Keegan Murray was last year. Maybe a little bit less. Could be a little bit more. But he will be talented. Guaranteed. I mean, because folks, honestly, Chris Murray was thought to be better than Keegan Murray coming into college. He's going to be dang good. I'm telling you guys that right now. Chris Murray is going to be good. Keegan Murray is going to go, you know, jump off. Uh, Pat McCaffrey, I think, is going to uh, be, you know, average about 10 points a game. Iowa has a nice athletic nucleus of 6'8", 6'9", guys. Plus, they have a sharpshooter in Peyton Sanford, which is good. You need that. I also think Joe Toussaint and Aaron Euless are very solid. Joe Toussaint's numbers when he played point guard by himself. The offense exploded when he was the point guard, pure point guard, and the defense was way better when he was in the game as opposed to when he was not in the game. And I think Aaron Euless is really nice as well. Point is, the sky is not falling, folks. Iowa basketball is just fine. Uh, they need to pick up uh, a graduate transfer to provide, to, to piece together this group, but this team is just fine. Everything will be all good. I... ESPN does not have Iowa making the NCAA tournament next year. It wouldn't be the first time that that was the case. Uh, you, you know, with Luca Garza, uh, when Luca Garza was a was a junior, they did not have Iowa making the NCAA tournament. Guess what? They won twenty games. So you know, um, I think Iowa will be fine. They'll be better defensively. And what I always say is, you never know how somebody is going to develop 
in the, over the offseason, and I think there's plenty of guys on Iowa that can take the next step that is needed. Paul, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I, no, I, I would totally echo all of that. Uh, look, it, it's going to be a young, athletic basketball team. Um, it, it's going to be a, a, hopefully a little bit of a different style. And, uh, you know, I think Fran can do a little bit more um, with the athleticism he's going to have this year than he's been able to do in the past because um, I was a little bit limited um, physically. Oh, man, they were way limited, not, not, Paul. Not, yeah, and not, not from uh, – athletic standpoint because those guys are athletic guys they're athletic but you know at, at six nine and long long arms uh the, these the, the you either are or you aren't and you know france gonna have you know guys that can run up and down the court uh they can get up and down they're gonna be long um you know they, there's gonna be things that, that we can do uh, more successfully than we just couldn't. So you know, don't uh, don't don't overreact to anything here because I'm I'm excited to see what what Fran can do. He loves he loves to let these guys play, and you know, uh, you know now he's going to have kind of the the horses to to be able to do that. So that's that's my take. Yeah, I'm with you, Paul. Um, you know, last year, you know, one thing I always said was that the starting group. They were athletic enough to play in the Big Ten, obviously, but they were not overly athletic to where they caused problems for the oppo opposing offense. In fact, that's why the opposing, oppo opposing teams always got ahead of Iowa because when Iowa played defense with their starting lineup, teams were able just to pass the ball around and do their thing and easy, you know, easily pass the ball around, get into their sets, get into their spots and things like that. That will not be the case next year. I'm with Paul hundred percent. All right, guys, we're at the one hour and 20 minute mark. Um, thank you all for being here. I love doing the video, Paul. Thank you for hanging with me. Um, uh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Ladies and gentlemen, be sure to go to two, four, seven Hawkeye.com. Um, and, uh, uh, obviously the best place to find our content is, is on Facebook, Nolan Hawkeye, Anthony, uh, and Paul Monahan. I'll put his, um, Facebook profile in the, in the description. Um, and then, you know, uh, YouTube, Nolan Hawkeye, Anthony, where you guys can find our videos and, uh, you know, uh, I guess Twitter and parlor at two, four, seven Hawkeye, you know, screw it. Instagram as well at official two, four, seven Hawkeye.com page. Paul, thank you for hanging with me, buddy. I love you more. Uh, I like you more than a friend. Um, you're a good guy. Ladies and gentlemen, DBAP, don't be a pussy willow. In fact, so feelings, your feelings don't matter. Go Hawks. Fox.